this is not much of a stretch for him. As you can see, he's loaded out with like the best cameras available at the time. Anyway, he always was a photographer. Hi. Very good. Nice to see you. That was Tony Shafrazi, and he was with Julian Schnabel. This uh, billboard, or painting as I would call it, is, is Henry Geltzeller, and he was um, a, a curator at the Metropolitan Museum when the Metropolitan used to show contemporary art. And in 1971, when he quit the Metropolitan to become the head of the Department of Cultural Affairs in New York, he was asked why he left the Met, and he said it was time to get out of politics. Uh, Henry was really uh, the center of pop art because he introduced the pop artists to each other. And um, he took, after seeing Andy's paintings, he took um, him to Rauschenberg's studio to show him how to silk screen. And later Rauschenberg complained to me, I should have never shown him how to silk screen. This is the kind of group that, that hung out here. This, David Hockney, Andy Warhol, Henry Geltzeller, and I don't know who that is. These are not really called paintings, but uh, billboards is what uh, Dennis has called them, and they have been built by, um, painted by a uh, professional billboard painter. Well, he had a, rem I suppose a remarkable time. He had done some art before as a kid coming from Kansas. When he was 15 or so, he was in, um, 15, 16, he was in um, San Diego Playhouse doing Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. and, and then when he went to Los Angeles, Hollywood, I was in um, uh, 50, 1954, fall of 54, and the first um, thing he made, we have a piece of it here showing where he's a young boy, an epileptic young boy. Mm -hmm. and his performance was so distinct, right away he got seven offers coming in, so he designed his first contract. With Warner Brothers, I think it was, uh, it was January 7th of 55, and he was 18, just barely 18 years old, if 18 yet. I think he was still 17, because um, January 7th, unlike uh -huh. 18. And then, of course, immediately by springtime, they they put him with James Dean and Rebel Without a Cause. I uh, know. And then uh, from spring through summer, they went on to do Giant, where he had a much bigger part, yeah, talking part or whatnot. And so those, and then by October of that same year, James Dean was dead, of course, sadly. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that period, uh, a lot transpired between these two. Uh, Dennis became from 17 to 18, James Dean was 24 when uh -huh. he died. And of course, uh, to us it seems like nothing, but when you're, you know, if you remember back when you're that age, uh, the difference between 18 and 19 or 18 and 20 is great. So <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know, the, the old kids. You know, yeah, a little bit more, yeah. <laughs> and besides, of course, James Dean was already a remarkable sort of a genius sort of uh -huh. performer. And he noticed it. So it, it was with his encouragement, James Dean's encouragement, which really is the, one of the main points of the big book that I've been working on for 18 years, which is now, out now, which is it was with his encouragement to for Dennis to continue and take photographs. All right. Because it was through that, he, James Dean felt that he could control the picture and go on possibly to direct, understand picture making more. Acting was one thing, but the taking picture was another. All right. So that was an encouragement, number one. Well, these pictures are really sp specifically from 1960 to 67, 68, because by 67, he started getting busy with Easy Rider. Uh -huh. So then he stopped taking pictures. And then he picked up again, I guess, in the uh, late 70s, a few things. and early 80s again, but uh, they're different. So this was the period that we wanted to focus with this book, uh -huh. uh, as they've been shown. Also, my history of having seen them in 66 in London at Robert Fraser Gallery. So... Um, Is that when you met him? I, I met him before that. I met him in 63 at the Royal College of Art. Oh. So Walter Hobbs told me a story that it was there that that one summer, James Dean and Dennis Harper came to that little place. And that was a wonderful story. That was because... Apparently, there was an eccentric, crazy Chinese person wearing a military crazy outfit, outfit with medals and all of that, feathers and a hat. Used to do drop dead to uh, makeshift performances in Hollywood Boulevard, uh -huh. right in front of the Chinese theater, which uh -huh. later on. From a Chinese theater. Yeah, uh -huh. in front of the He was doing these performances. 
James Dean happened to have been impressed with this guy's performance. Uh -huh. So he'd taken Dennis Hopper with him. They'd heard, it so happened that Walter Hopps, having started this gallery, um, uh, was do, had invited this guy to do performance there. Right. Small space back then, nobody would buy art. And various people beat, you know, was performance, beat sort of assemblage, collage kind of material. Allen Ginsberg and Jack Carrick used to stop by there. It's a small, right. Before he went on to open the Ferris Gallery two years later. So when they're having that performance with this guy, James Dean and Dennis Hopper come, and that's how he, Walter Hobbs, gets to know James Dean, James Dean, but especially Dennis, and they stayed friends until Walter died two years ago. Uh -huh. Walter goes on to go and open the Ferris Gallery by 60 or 60 or so, uh, Irving Blum, young handsome guy from the East Coast arrives, and Walter gives him half the gallery. Uh -huh. By 61, end of 61, early 62, he gets busy with his dream, which was to organize the big retrospective for Duchamp, which he does at the Pasadena Museum. Uh -huh. So he gives up the second part of his gallery to Irving as well, and he goes to the museum world. Thereafter, uh -huh. he's in Pasadena, then he goes to Iowa Museum, where he buys the famous Pope of Francis Bacon and a great painting of Jasper Jones called Tennyson for the museum. And then after that, in the uh, mid 70s, he goes to uh, Washington. He does the first world retrospective for Rauschenberg and so on. And then by the late 70s, he gets invited to go to uh, the Texas to, for the Demonels. And he's the one who discovers and finds uh, um, uh, Renzo Piano to build the building. So he's the founding director of the Demonel Museum. Very nice. That, that's Walter Hobbs. Uh, okay, I, I thank you for that complete background. That's, that's, that's a remarkable guy. So he played a role, big role in Dennis's life, his old friend. Uh -huh. At that time, when, there, when, when at this moment in 63, when they're having this family. This whole show is. It's anyway. rife with threads like that through the whole play. Bravo, yes, absolutely. The only, the only other... Uh, uh, well, the Henry's, cultural... Henry's another one too, you're right, you see. It, 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 the, the, it's, we've tried to really, because we've worked on it for so long, the historical th roots, the threads, are very important. Because really, Walter, as much as there were some galleries in, in Los Angeles before, but really it's Walter who basically establishes the four legs of the table, which, which become the foundation for the Los Angeles uh -huh. art world in a way. Right. And thereafter, he goes into the museum world. Uh, Irving Blum, who takes on the gallery, continues with his wonderful shows with the uh, Warhol show, for example, the Campbell Soup paintings in 62. Yeah. The Elvis and... Uh, when people thought same. he was out of his mind. He did very well with it. Yes, he did very well, exactly. Very yeah, well, yeah. Uh, If you could have just bought that whole Elvis show at that boy. time, boy, that would have been a deal. <laughs> That's right, yeah, and hardly anybody did in those days, yeah. The, you know, the, in the, fact, this is what's interesting. Uh, when they had that show of 36 Campbell Soup paintings, uh, Irving Baum remembers very well that one painting was sold, one was out on approval. At the end of the show, he called up Warhol and said, Irving Blum says, by the way, I'm sorry the show didn't do very well, only one was sold, but I have an idea. I'm going to call and get the other one back also. I'll make a deal with you if you really give me a big break. Yeah. Uh, reduce the price dramatically, but also allow me to pay gradually from my increments of sort of small salary that I have over yeah. the year. So that's how he ended up keeping all of them. Yeah. And he owned all of them until finally, I think it was 97 or so, they, go, they went to the Museum of Modern Art for $15 million. Yeah. So that's the story of the Campbell Soup painting. Yeah, I know. That same week mm -hmm. where he thought that he had the only one, aside from the 36 Andy World made, I would say, I don't know, 10 or 12 other Campbell Soup paintings, mm -hmm. same quality, equally good, but the 36 were sent for the exhibition, hence they right. remained together. Then Sauber buys one, actually, and, right. and he kept one. The first time Ed Ruchain does a big show, which is in 62, the big fa famous gas station painting again belongs to Dennis Hopper. And oh, this right. is what, this is, if you see the book, I'll show you the photograph, you see time and again, they come to New York with Irving Blum and also with, uh, with Walter to visit, for example, Warhol. And that's how they get, they get to be friends the first time. And, um, and consequently, uh, 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 David Hockney arriving from, the following year arriving from uh, London to go to see Warhol, even a year and a half ago, uh, in the summer, we were reuniting together. Well, going to the factory was a place where people went to get energy. Dylan That's would right. go to hang out there, not say much, but yes. just absorb the, the, the scene. Well, this is what happened. David coming from London, he was really looking forward to meet uh, Warhol. And of course, when he goes there, there's Dennis Hopper. He's already known. Uh -huh. So they're fascinated so together. They go the following, no, that same afternoon, Walter, I mean, sorry, Andy Warhol and, and, and um, David Hockney go to Times Square to see a movie, uh, um, which Dennis had made in 61, 
uh, called Night Tide, right. was a sailor. And the next day, with Henry Geltzeller, to go to see Dennis shooting one of the scenes, and that's where that photograph came from. This, so that, this exhibit would account. make a wonderful movie. I don't know who you would get to play uh, the young Dennis Hopper, but... Uh, I know who would be Owen Wilson. Oh, uh, yeah, he'd be good.